Welcome to a series on differential equations. In this video, I'm going to be introducing the concept of differential equations through a series of examples, and I'm going to talk about how we categorize differential equations in the first place. So, what is a differential equation? Well, the most basic definition I can come up with is this one right here. So, a differential equation is essentially an equation that involves a function, in this case, y is a function of x, and any derivatives of that function. So this right here would be a first order differential equation because the highest order of the derivatives involved is just order one, as can be seen here. Now a differential equation can have any form and usually there are two main types of differential equations. So there are linear and nonlinear differential equations. So to illustrate what the difference is between them, I'm gonna draw two different types of differential equations here. So the first one is going to be second derivative of y with respect to x. And it's gonna have some other terms to it. There's gonna be a first derivative and then there's gonna be an x squared times the function itself and that's gonna be equal to another function of x here. So this is an example of a linear differential equation because all the terms that involve the function y and the derivatives of y are simply linear. And that means that there's no function acting on them. They're just there by themselves. And the only things that we have is just these uh, functions of x or constants multiplying them through that. Now, an example of a nonlinear differential equation would be something like this. So suppose that I have a first order differential equation and then I score the first derivative like that, that already makes the differential equation nonlinear. And if I add another term such as sine of y equals some constant, as you can see, that's another nonlinear expression of y, which is the function we want to solve for. And that would be an example of a nonlinear differential equation. Now, these two examples pertain to the class of ordinary differential equations. And what that means is that they only involve functions of a single variable. In this case, y is just a function of x. There is another class of differential equations called partial differential equations. And those are the ones that involve partial derivatives. So to give you an example of that, you may have some function of x and y, such as this, and then you would have partial derivatives with respect to that function in the differential equation. So you may have something like this, two first order partial derivatives equal to zero. So this is what we would call a partial differential equation. Now, it doesn't need to be as simple as this. There are very complicated ones that you will find through God, um, your studies of mathematics, but essentially it can be any combination of partial derivatives. We can have something like a mixed derivative thrown in here. So we can have that. And then on the other side, we can have something like one over k squared, which is a constant. And then the second derivative of psi x y over second derivative with respect to x, so that would be another example of a partial derivative. Now, how do we generalize the concept of a differential equation? Well, that's quite simple. There are two ways that we can generalize this. If we take into account the concept of a linear differential equation, we could write some, an expression like this. So that would be a generic function of x. It could be anything we choose it to be, then it would be the partial, I'm sorry, the derivative of y with respect to x, and then we can add another term to that, so that would be a minus one of x, d n minus one of y, d x n minus one, and that keeps going on and on until we get to the first term, which would be in fact the function itself. And then we would make this equal to some other function of x. So this would be an example of a very general um, ordinary differential equation. This would be linear. And 
we would classify this as a non-homogeneous differential equation because on the right hand side of the equation we have a function of x so that would be a linear one so we can generalize this by defining an operator so a linear operator which is essentially the sum of all the functions so I'm just going to use i as a subscript here of the derivatives so the i-th derivative and from i equals to 0 all the way to i equals to n so it would be any sum that we choose so the order of the derivatives is going to be given by the highest order of the derivatives involved in it and then we can rewrite this very basic operator as follows now this right here would be our most general expression for a linear ordinary differential equation in a similar manner we can have a nonlinear differential equation and in that case all we would need to do is to take into account the fact that for a nonlinear operator we would have a sum of functions so any number of generic functions like this and but the only difference now I'm just gonna erase that a little bit the only difference now is that we will actually have a function of the derivatives like this so from i equals to 0 to i equals to n and therefore our nonlinear operator on the equation would be something like this and by g as a function of the derivative I mean any function of it so it could be something like sine of dy dx or it could be something like e to the y squared or any function really that involves y in some way and just to make a final remark we know that the zero of derivative is essentially just a constant so it's just one it doesn't really operate on the function so that's um, the main difference between them now luckily in most practical applications we only need to deal with linear differential equations and nonlinear differential equations are only encountered in more complicated scenarios and most of them actually don't have an analytic solution so you actually have to resort to some so, some kind of numerical method which I will cover in um, a couple of videos at the end of this series but for now we're just gonna focus on the linear differential equations so you might be wondering what is the whole fuss about differential equations well the whole thing about differential equations is that once you solve them for the function you want to find you can actually find a formula that allows you to calculate any um, property or any value of that system as it evolves with respect to a particular variable so to give you an example we could have something like this just a first derivative that is related to the function itself and this is something we will solve in the next video but for now this is essentially something that when you solve it the function of y would actually look like an exponential function the curious thing about differential equations though so in this case k would be a constant and the very curious thing is that you don't get just a single solution for that problem you actually get a whole family of solutions in fact in most cases you can have an infinite number of solutions because for any value of k that you choose you're going to have a different solution you can have something like this or like that or like that or like that there are so many there are endless possibilities in fact and even if you make this um, constant negative then that changes the whole thing this would actually become um, uh, an exponential decay function instead so there, there are so many different possibilities what defines the particular solution to a differential equation is something called the initial condition and the initial condition is essentially something like this so your function is y so at the whatever value of the variable is at zero that's gonna be some constant value we need a numerical value and that's what's gonna be our initial condition now once you input this into the original formula you can 
pretty much find the specific solution that you're looking for. Otherwise, you just get a general expression that gives you the whole family of solutions for that particular problem. Now, you might be wondering, well, this is all really nice and really really interesting, but how do you actually derive this and how why would you need to solve it in the first place? Well, I'm going to show you an example from physics which shows this um, in a very neat manner. So, I'm going to draw here a little spring and I'm going to attach a little car to it. So, that car is going to have a constant mass m and the spring is going to have a constant of or spring constant k. So we're going to ignore the effects of friction or any other external forces. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that this cord is displaced towards the right and that displacement is marked by the variable x. So how do we go about deriving a differential equation for the motion of this particular system? Well, that's quite simple. We first draw a free body diagram, so a little bit of revision from simple mechanics we're going to have a restoring force from the spring acting on the mass and that's going to be pulling it towards the left and that restoring force is going to be equal to the spring constant times the displacement but we're also going to have another force that force which is inherent of the motion of the center of mass of the cord and that is just going to be the mass times the acceleration in the x direction so that's going to be the free body diagram in this case. So how do we balance this out? Well, the sum of the forces in the x direction has to be equal to this because the forces need to balance out, ma, and then we're going to have minus kx on this side. So now that we have this, well, what is acceleration really? It's actually the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. So if we make that substitution here, dt squared, and I'm going to move this to the other side so it looks a little bit neater, what do we have here? Well, we have a second order differential equation. And if you notice something about it, it's also linear. So we can actually solve this very easily. So you can see from a very simple system here, we derive a differential equation that allows us to find the displacement as a function of time for any value of t that we choose and that's very important in any branch of dynamics and it's also applicable to any branch of physics or engineering and we'll use it quite a lot for a lot of different things but that's the basic notion behind differential equations in the next video i'm going to explain how to solve some of those um, basic differential equations such as this first order differential equation and we're going to go through some more theorems um, that add some more information to the rigorous mathematical definition behind them but hopefully this video has given you some intuition as to what differential equations are how they can be derived from a v basic uh, physical system and why they're so important in so many branches of um, science engineering economics and we'll do a lot of examples on those later on.